fired to the House. The mayor of Murfreesboro, he'll get reelected after that. In zone, Kevin Byers. So Kevin, for the first half of the season, we kind of heard over and over again, Kevin Byers back. How do you feel about that statement? You know, I just take it for what it is. Um, obviously, the talk of the offseason was, you know, Kevin Byer had a down year last year. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of right. I didn't put up the statistics that I'm normally used to putting up. But I mean, I think John and, and Vrabel did a great job bringing guys in this offseason, whether it's the Nico, Bud, uh, all these new pieces, Jack Rabbit. And I think we've messed really well. The pass rush has been great. And, Whenever you have a great pass rush, you know, I could be opportunistic on the back end, making a lot of different plays. So definitely want to give more credit to the guys up front because they've been helping me having a great year. Did you have a different mindset coming into the 2021 season? Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of excuses can be made, whether it was COVID, all different type of stuff. But I feel like, you know, I had to really take a different mental approach this year. Because like I said, I felt like I didn't play up to my standard last year. So I had to make sure that, you know, I had, I had to place that chip back on my shoulder that I had my first couple of years. And, uh, it's been working, so I've got to make sure I keep that chip. When you have that kind of success early in your career, you ended up going to Pro Bowls. You were recognized a lot around the league for what you accomplished early in your career. Do you feel the pressure to reach a bar that's maybe abnormally high? Like the field, field goal literally keeps moving <laughs> a little bit? Absolutely, because like you said, I set the bar really high for myself coming in. My second year having 10 turnovers that year, I felt like you know I can put up those numbers every single year. And so when it doesn't happen, you kind of look and you kind of evaluate yourself, hey, what am I doing differently? But like I said, I feel like my bar is high and I want to keep that standard high. So I expect the best for myself and I expect myself to make plays every single game I play in. So that's just something I had to keep going because like I said, when I don't make those plays, then I got to reevaluate. Do you extend that expectation to the guys that you're in a room with, to the enti entire secondary, really? Yeah, I mean, because I feel like just the stand that I have for myself, I feel like we all need to have the same type of standard. We all have to raise the bar. And I think that's my job as a leader, to make sure that my standard is high, to raise everybody else's standards around me, and we can all, you know, ball and make plays. So it's been something we've been doing really well this year. As a leader, you lead, obviously, on the football field, but also off the football field. You are so involved in the community around here. Um, why is that so important to you? It's important to me because I understand that I'm a person that comes from, you know, I've been through hard times, I've been through difficult times, and I feel like, you know, everybody in this world are always going to be in a situation where, you know, things are always going to be great. And so I relate to that. So me and my wife started our foundation a couple years ago, the Buyer Family Legacy Fund, and we want to just extend as much grace to everybody involved because God has extended a lot of grace to us and our family. A lot of what you do involves children and in investing in the youth. Why is that something that really kind of captures your interest? Because the youth, they, you know, they're the future. Uh, I think they're going, they're going to be the ones that change the world. I think we need to try to impact the youth as much as possible because, you know, sometimes in this life and in, in the world, you're not going to change the opinions of a lot of different people. But if you can talk to the youth and try to, you know, spark their brains, you know, it can change the whole trajectory of their life. So that's what I'm about a lot of different things. It's not just football camps or school supply giveaways or things like that. You really have a diverse portfolio of things that the foundation gets involved in. Do you have a favorite project that you guys have been able to work on? Well, I mean, last year we partnered with uh, Ryan Tannehill and we did a really great Chris Christmas event. We held it actually at Nissan Stadium. And I think we gave away like $50,000 worth of gifts and toys. We was able to give a family a new Nissan car, which was awesome. And I also enjoy doing Thanksgiving. I love giving away Thanksgiving meals, family meals to families who may not, may not can afford a turkey or afford a meal. So to see the faces of the people, and especially see the faces of the children, just to have a great meal and a family meal on Thanksgiving, you know, it means the world to me.